Today we're going to do a review of relative pronouns. What is the relative pronoun? Well, it's how we express in Latin the words who, whose, whom, and which. Let's take a look at the forms. Okay, here are the forms in Latin. I'll go through them in just a minute, but there's also a corresponding video where I sing a little song to help you memorize them. I encourage you to take a look at the video and use the song to help you out. Okay, let's take a closer look at these forms. For the nominative, we have qui, quae, and quad for the singular, and for the plural, we have qui, quae, and quae. For the genitive singular, we have quius all the way across, and for the genitive plural, we have quorum, quorum, quorum. For the dative, we have qui going all the way across in the singular, and then quibus going all the way across for all genders in the plural. For the accusative, we have quem, quam, and quad for the singular, and then quos, quas, and quae for the plural. For the ablative, we have quo, qua, and quo for the singular, and then quibus going across for all genders in the plural. Let's see if we can recognize some familiar patterns. First, you might have noticed this IUS ending for quius. This IUS ending we've also seen for adjectives such as ille or hick, or if you go by all three genders, ille, ala, alud, and hick, hike, hoke. For ille, the genitive singular is ilius. And for hic hike hoke, the genitive singular is huius. In addition, you might have also recognized the dative singular I ending found at the end of qui. For example, ille, the dative singular is illi. So there's a similarity there. For the accusative singular, you might have recognized the M ending the em ending, which we see in the third declension, and the om ending, which we've seen in the first declension. And then for the ablative singular, we've seen this quo, qua, quo pattern before in the first and second declension. The obes coming from the second declension and the a from the first. In the plural, we've seen the quorum, 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 just like the quo, qua, quo, coming from the first and second declension. Likewise, the quos is from the second declension, and the quas of the feminine plural accusative is from the first declension. And then, of course, we have the quibus with the ibus endings in the dative and ablative plural, this ibis ending we've seen in the third declension. Next, you might have also noticed that the neuter's nominative and accusative is the same for both the singular and the plural, just like they are accustomed to be in standard declensions. Okay. Before we go forward, let's look at some terminology. Namely, we need to know this word antecedent, which means the thing that goes before. Now the antecedent is the noun or pronoun to which the relative pronoun refers. And as you may guess, it usually goes before the relative pronoun. Now let's dissect what that definition means through a couple of examples. First, I see the men to whom I gave the money. As you recall from a few slides ago, our relative pronoun is whom, which is often grouped together with a preposition that might be near it. So to whom is a relative pronoun. I'm abbreviating it RP. Now, the question is, what is this pronoun standing for? Is it I? Is it the money? Well, it usually goes before our relative pronoun in English, and it's the men. They're answering the question, whom did you give the money? The men. In English, the antecedent always goes immediately before your relative pronoun. In Latin, that does not hold true, and you'll need to devise some tricks and use gender and number to help you figure out what your antecedent will be. Let's look at the next example. That is the city from which I left. 
our relative pronoun, as you may recall from a few slides before, is which. And again, I'm just going to group it in with the preposition that goes before it. So which is our relative pronoun. Now the question is, what noun is which standing for? See if you can figure it out on your own. It's the city. From which city did you leave? That city. Or from where did you leave? The city. Here are three rules about how relative pronouns work. One, they agree with their antecedent and gender and number. However, two, they do not need to agree, agree with their antecedent and case. Rather, three, their case is determined by their use in the relative clause. Let's address this term relative clause briefly. A relative clause is the subordinate clause or subordinate phrase which contains a relative pronoun. You can usually identify the relative clause by marking maybe a parenthesis before the relative pronoun, which I'm going to agree is RP, and then ending it after you see your next verb. Okay, let's look at a handful of examples. Let's start with our first one. Milites qui in Gallia pugna verant, Romae sunt. All right, now let's use our strategies we just learned about how to form a relative clause. First, we're going to take one parenthesis and put it before the relative pronoun. Qui is our relative pronoun, so we're going to put a parenthesis here. Then we're going to close our parentheses by putting it after the next verb we see. Qui in Gallia pugna verant, close parentheses. This mechanism for finding the relative clause will not always work, but it's a good start. If something goes wrong, you can adjust from there. Okay, so let's start off by translating everything that's not in the parentheses. So, milites romae sunt. All right, that's the soldiers. Sunt, R. And then we have this word romae, which is an allocative case to show place where. So we would say the soldiers are at Rome. All right, now we're ready to insert our relative clause. Like I said before, our relative pronoun is qui, is qui. And so our first question is, what is the antecedent? Remember, it must agree in gender and number. Now, qui must be nominative, and we can tell that it's going to be plural because of a verb, pugna verunt, which is plural. So our antecedent must be plural, and qui is always masculine. So our antecedent here must be masculine, and it must be plural. Whether or not our antecedent is nominative is irrelevant, because the antecedent only needs to match in gender and number. So is the word that goes immediately before milites masculine and plural? Yes, it is. So milites is our antecedent. Okay, the soldiers, qui, we're going to say who. And that's because for the nominative case in Latin, we use who in English. So the soldiers who, pugna verant, fought, in Gallia, in Gaul, that's our relative class. We can put it together in one sentence and say, the soldiers who fought in Gaul are at Rome. All right, let's do the next one. Milites fortes, quos dux in venit, uxores amant. We're going to start by doing the same process of separating our relative clause off in parentheses. So milites fortes, then I see quos, which is a relative pronoun, so I'm going to put a parenthesis. Dux in venit, and venit is our next verb, so I'm going to close the parenthesis. Uxores amant. Let's translate everything that's not in the relative clause. So milites fortes, the strong soldiers, all 
Our verb is amant, which is third person plural, present, so we would say love. Uxores, their wives. How sweet. All right, now let's add in the relative clause. Our relative pronoun is quos, and quos is accusative in form. So we're going to be using whom in English, which corresponds to the accusative relative pronoun in Latin. You can remember that whom corresponds to the accusative because it ends in an M, just like the singular forms in Latin end in M for the accusative as well. Now our next question is, who is our antecedent? Quos is masculine and it's plural. Is our milites masculine and plural? Yes, they are. So once again, they are our antecedent. So our sentence will go, the strong soldiers whom, now the subject of our relative clause is dux, the leader. So whom the leader, and our verb is in wane it, which is third person singular perfect. And it comes from the verb to find. So we would say whom the leader found. Let's pull it together. The strong soldiers whom the leader found love their wives. All right, are you ready for the third one? Hike herbs in qua habitabam a romanis deleta est. Okay, see if you can try to separate the relative clause off on your own. Okay. Did you put a parenthesis before qua and then after habitabam? If so, then you've definitely been following the instructions. However, this is one of those sorts of circumstances where we need to make an adjustment. That in right before the qua is the preposition that is making qua become ablative, right? Qua is the object of that in. And because of that, we need to make a little adjustment. Erase, erase, erase and put our first parenthesis before the in. That in is part of our relative clause. Okay, let's translate everything except what is in the relative clause. Hike herbs a romanis deleta est. So this city, our verb is deleta est, which is third singular. It is feminine because it's agreeing with herbs and it is perfect and passive. It is from the verb meaning destroy. So this city was destroyed. Ehu! A Romanis by the Romans. Now let's see if we can add our relative clause. In qua. Now our relative pronoun qua is feminine and it is singular. What noun is feminine and singular in this sentence that can be our antecedent? That would be herbs. So this city, which, and I'm using which because city is a thing, not a person. So this city, which, or rather inqua, in which habitabam I used to live. Let's pull it all together. This city in which I used to live was destroyed by the Romans. 